and we'll try this one here. Okay. So, uh, what would the concentration of sodium ions and phosphate ions be in one molar sodium phosphate? So this one is fairly simple, right? So you do need to know, in this case, um, this molecular formula. So this is the reason why we were uh, learning um, reaction formulas in chapter five, right? So when it says something like, so this formula would not be given to you here. It says, what would the concentration, in fact, a better way to word this would be, what would the, the concentration of sodium ions and phosphate ions be when you dissolve um, sodium phosphate um, into solution to make one molar solution, okay? Enough sodium phosphate to make a one molar solution. So in order to be able to do that, you would need to write this chemical equation here. So sodium phosphate, the reason you know that it looks like this is because you know the polyatomic phosphate, PO4, 3 minus. So this is one of the polyatomics that you have to know, okay? So the 3 minus there. And you know also that sodium is in group 1, right? So it's a plus 1 charge. So in order to put these two things together, you're going to need three of these to every one of these, right? And so when you're going to put it together, it's like that, sodium phosphate. Okay? So it said to dissolve that. So that means to, to begin with, it was a solid into water, like that. And when you do that, that breaks up the salt into its constituent ions, right? So a lot of people want to keep this as Na with the 3 behind it, okay, as a subscript. So that's incorrect, because that means that all of those Na's are stuck together, okay? So instead, those Na's all break apart, right? So we've got 3 Na pluses, like that. And since we've dissolved them into water, they're aqueous now, okay? And we have one PO4, three minus aqueous. Okay, so it said that the concentration of our solution, the concentration of Na3PO4 was, well, we'll give it well, let's add one molar. I guess we don't need to give it any more sig figs. So what is it talking about? It's talking about one molar Na3PO4, like that. So when we're saying molar, remember that's the shorthand way of writing one mole per one mole of Na3PO4 per liter, like that, okay? So, remember, the reaction equation itself gives us uh, these um, conversion factors that we can use for this particular problem, right? So this problem was asking us, well, if we know the concentration of this, What's the concentration of this and what's the concentration of this, okay? So, we're trying to figure out, well, what's the concentration of sodium ions? Okay. So, we have a conversion factor. For every one um, sodium phosphate, we've got three sodiums, okay? So, we can write this. So, for every one mole of Na3PO4, that equals three moles of Na plus ions, okay? Is that okay? So, to figure out what the concentration of sodium ions is, all we use is this conversion factor, or this, and multiply by this conversion factor. Okay, so the original concentration, one mole 
Na3PO4 divided by 1 liter of solution. Because we're not messing with it, we still have the same amount of solution. We're just trying to figure out how many sodium ions we have. And we've got this conversion factor. So if we want to know sodium ions over here, right, we're going to put that on top. So there's three moles of sodium ions for every one mole of Na3PO4. So cancel, cancel like that. And moles per liter, remember, is molarity. Okay. And since we only have one sig fig, it's going to be three molar in sodium ions, right? And you guys could probably do the same thing for phosphate ions. What would be the molarity of phosphate ions? One mole, right? So you would do the same exact thing. I'll just do it really quick. Questions on that in particular. Pretty straightforward, right? So we're going to compare that in the next problem to we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with equivalents for leaf. Okay?